Mate, it's, it's, look, it's a bit of a reunion tonight. I mean, what, you get a buzz catching up with, I know you went with Wesley College, but you were iconic with the, with the Canes and the ABs, and obviously uh, just being tonight, seeing Dougie Rollison and flipper, mostly Colorado's here from uh, Manawatu country and all these ABs. You get a buzz out of seeing some of these old covers that you played with and against over the years. Yeah, one of the great things I think about rugby. Yeah. Well, actually, one of, the, one of the great things I think about rugby is that um, you don't need to see guys week in, week out. Seen them five years, ten years uh, from the last time you saw them, and you're still great mates. That's one of the great things about the camaraderie of rugby. But it's interesting when you do get together what guys that you haven't seen for a number of years talk about. Bernie McCarr was my old mate over here. Bernie, I've played against uh, Bernie many times um, for Taranaki against Auckland. Uh, we went to Bermuda many years ago together in uh, the classic All Blacks. But the first thing that comes out of his mouth when I see him, he starts talking about Viagra. <laughs> And he, said, and he says to me, hey, Paul, you know what? I don't take those Viagra pulls. What I'm doing is taking the Viagra eye drops. I said, is that why? He said, yeah, so at least I look hard. <laughs> so it's amazing what you talk about when you get together. <laughs> well, mate, you, he was a second 5 eight after that. <laughs> you're in the extermination business, mate, so pest control with the radars, mate. Tell us about what you're up to. What, what, what's all this? How did you get into pest management? Oh. What uh, Dobbo's referring to there is I, I work for a, a company called Genus and um, I'm the manager of, uh, uh, of a division which is pest management. So we actually look after uh, Wesley College here. We look after you know things like rodents and birds and things like that. So I manage a group of a dozen or so guys. So it's good fun. It's a family owned business, um, $30 million a year business. It's, um, it's nice to work with, um, you know, obviously when you finish playing rugby, you're, you're looking for things to do and um, it's nice to have a good job. and. One of the great things is I get to still travel around the country and, and hang out with good people, so, so I love it. It's good fun. So you hit it first, the ball gets to terminate the birds. I love it, yes. Well, no, I didn't say that because the birds is an emotional subject. Ladies, you didn't hear me say that. We take care of birds. We relocate them. <laughs> Relocation. <laughs> you, you tow on the base because you come out to Auckland uh, every one or two weeks? Yeah, yeah, I've been in Tauranga for about uh, 15 years, so uh, in my rugby days I was, I was based in Taranaki, so... Yeah, I've been living in Tauranga for 14, 15 years, it's fantastic. Um, kids love it there, got five kids, a couple of them into rugby, so it's nice when you sort of uh, see young kids starting to come through, a couple of boys in the first 15, and um, they've just made a Bay of Plenty sort of under 18 development or training camp, so yeah, I'm really loving that side of it. And I've uh, been very fortunate over the years, I've uh, commentated on Wesley College a, a number of times through um, Land Rover first 15 rugby, so it's always nice to come back, and I've got to say um, congratulations to everyone that's organised the night, because uh, it takes a lot to put a night like this together. Congratulations on all the people who are supporting it, and uh, I want one place to come, and you're always uh, well received here, so it's nice to be here. Well, Paul, you're our first guest speaker before dinner, and dinner will be served probably in the next few minutes, but uh, you know the old adage about what stays on tour, you know what happens on tour stays on tour. Is there anything that you could perhaps... Uh, share with us that was on tour, that even if it's a sanitised version, just a, a little story or an incident on the field, off the field, that really sticks out in your career? Well, Bernie's here, and um, I won't say too much about him because he's got to speak a little bit later on, but, you, you know, you do you do meet some interesting characters, and, and I was just thinking about, because I knew you'd ask me a question like this, and I was thinking about um, some of the characters played with over the years, and, and Richard Lowe it was a real character in the All Blacks, and um, he sort of had that reputation that he was a bit of a... Well, he was a bit of a monster on the field. I think he was a bit overplayed. He was a bit of a hard man. But one thing about Lowy um, that probably a lot of people don't know unless you've met him, he was a wonderful guy off the field. He was particularly good company if you like to listen. He used to, uh, he used to uh, tell a very good story, and particularly if he cornered you at night in a bar or somewhere, you know, you, uh, that's how I got Collie Fair. He's not propping against him, but listening to him and <laughs> nodding my head. But one of the things that Lowy used to like to do on, um, on tours or... Um, what was he's uh, married to uh, Felicity and three kids and um, he used to like to go shopping because rugby in those days is a little bit different to to modern rugby that these young men are involved in we used to train once a day so you had a lot of downtime so he used to uh, be able to pursue a lot of other interests and one of Lowy's interests was going out and shopping for his family so anyway this particular um, uh, time we we're on tour and um, it was low because at that stage it was my first year in the team not the sort of bloke you sort of argue with. So I said, yeah, that'll be cool. So we get in the cab, and of course, when you're, when you're playing for the All Blacks, you're well-recognised, most people know who you are. We got in the back of the cab, 
Immediately the cab driver's looking in the rear vision mirror at Lowy, totally ignoring me, which was a little bit rude, but nonetheless, he was looking at Lowy. <laughs> and we're driving down the road, and he said, uh, Mr. Lowe, do you like conundrums? And Lowy, dead quiet. He was a little bit like myself, he didn't know what a conundrum was, and if you don't know, ask your neighbour. Um, so anyway, it was a bit like when we were playing in the front row when I played, they used to say, don't think, just push. But anyway, so the cab driver, the cab driver picked up that Lowy didn't know what a conundrum was, so he, he went on, he said, uh, uh, Mr. Lowe, do you like riddles? And, and the, uh, you know, the uh, penny dropped for Lowe, and he said, yeah, 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 I do like riddles. He said, I've got one for you. Now it goes like this. Now it's not my brother, and it's not my sister, Yet it's a child of my mother and father. Who is it? And once again, Lowy dead quiet. He didn't have a clue. So the cab driver pulled him in and said, Mate, it's simple. It's, it's me. So anyway, that was the end of their conversation or relationship because uh, Lowy didn't like to be put one across, across him, so he didn't speak to the cab driver again. But anyway, cab driver drops us off. We do our shopping. I arranged for him because Lowy wasn't talking at this day. So come back, pick us up, take us back to the hotel. After he picks us up, takes us back to the hotel, Lowy, and he, for the boys you know him, he was a very passionate, energetic guy. He goes strolling into the reception at the hotel and there's a few of the boys uh, hovering around, killing a bit of time, having a coffee. He goes striding up to me and goes, hey guys, do you like conundrums? <laughs> like, what? Conundrums? What's that? And he said, riddles. He said, yeah, the boys, I think it was Zinni and Fitzy and Buncey and a few of the boys, said, yeah, love riddles. And he said, I've got one for you. Now it goes like this. Now it's not my brother. And it's not my sister, yet it's the child of my mother and father. Who is it? And Zinni straight away, because as you are in these situations, you're competitive. He said, that's easy, Lowy, it's you. And Lowy gets a grin from ear to ear and said, yes, you're a dumb bastard, Zinni. It's a cab driver just dropped us off outside. <laughs> now, if you know Lowy, you're not allowed to tell him I told that story. <laughs> Well, we just one of your endearing moments, uh, either wearing the, the Vikings jersey oh, or the, the Hurricanes jersey, and, and, and you captured Reese Duggan with the Hurricanes. I think a lot of people don't realise that Dougie, you know, Reese was part of the Hurricanes first before he went on to the Highlanders and the Chiefs. But is there a standout memory? We, we tried to show you all, but you're only all black try. Of course, we had a few technical problems, but what's the standout memory for you, mate? Oh, well, there's lots, isn't there? But I, I think probably playing, I, I was fortunate enough to be involved in a very first ever professional game, um, and it was against the Hurricanes, against the Blues and Palmerston North. So that was a, a pretty amazing moment because um, we didn't know what was going on. Suddenly, um, I went from earning $350 or $400 a week as an auto electrician to getting paid in excess of, um, it was over $100,000. Now, um, you know, I didn't know how to, to uh, Count that much money, let alone know what to do with it. <laughs> Need to stay lost most of it. Um, but um, yeah, that was pretty an amazing time. You know, just just that whole learning um, about a professional environment, um, going from amateur to professional. It was it was a pretty incredible time, and it was a, a pretty fast ride. Um, and obviously, it's old hat now for these young guys um, coming into that scene. But yeah, that, that was that was an amazing time really, just to be part of it. And to be one of the most recognised faces in New Zealand rugby, mate, everywhere you went, you were, you know, ball, 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 ball. <laughs> and they had the ball ring after you and Tanaki. Well, it was a bit embarrassing because um, I um, I played 27 games for the All Blacks, but I, um, so I spent a fair bit of time uh, picking splinters out of my backside. And it was rather embarrassing when you're on the sideline at the big parks so like Eden Park and you're warming up and everyone's, ooh, ooh, and you're not even on the field. And, um, <laughs> I got asked by uh, someone who came up to me once, they said, gosh, you must be the most hated guy in New Zealand rugby. And I said, um, why do you say that? And they said, because every time uh, you get up off that uh, all black bench, they're all booing you. And I said, well, actually saying bull. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so a lot of people thought I was pretty hated. Mark, um, 1998, just fill us in because, I mean, you had a wonderful career, but it was cut short. Uh, what happened? A bit of a back injury. How did that happen? Yeah, well, I was, um, I finished when I was uh, 30 years old, I suppose, which is pretty young uh, for a prop. But, you know, I had a, a couple of prolapse uh, discs in my back and, um, you, you know, like, unfortunately, there's only three ways you finish rugby. You, uh, you retire, you get dropped, or you finish because you're, you're injured. Um, and none of, them are, none of them you want to ever think about them, but unfortunately it comes to all of us. And 
you know, my, my back blew out and um, I had to make the decision whether to, to carry on um, or give it away. And, and the reality is you, um, you've got to think of your, your life ahead and I suppose I did a bit of a, a crystal ball gaze and saw myself if I played rugby for another three or four years I could have been a bit of a wreck. So I decided to, to flag it and it was a time when I was sort of, um, you know, just I would have probably been a regular a test player. So it was a big decision but um, one I don't regret because I'm still very... Um, you know, very lucky that I get out of bed every morning, I don't have any aches or pains, I still train. Um, and now I've got a couple of young, uh, I've got five children, but a couple of my sons are into rugby. So, um, yeah, you know, just that's just the way it was. But, you know, I had a wonderful career and I don't regret a minute of it. All right, we're going to get you to a little bit of crystal ball gazing for us now. For the World Cup 2015, there's some senior All Blacks trying to make it. Being a front row specialist, there's a lot of talk. Uh, Mr Woodcock, is he going to be around, in your opinion, for the... 2015 World Cup, because we heard Steve Hansen say that some of these senior players aren't going to make it this year with the World Cup in mind. What does Paul Allen have to say about Mr. Woodcock? Well, I mean, every, everybody's different. I mean, I, I don't think it's about age. I think it's about miles on the clock. And obviously, the more miles you have on the clock, it gets harder to, to get up in front. And um, I think he'll struggle. I think he's been a fantastic servant of the game, but he's played a lot of rugby. And I think today, um, from what I see, young guys, it's not just about the playing on the field, it's about the off-field stuff. Uh, you've got to train pretty hard. It's a very physical game, as me and Bernie were talking. Uh, as a front row forward, I used to tackle, you know, we guys used to run from about two metres away. We used to sort of scrag them and throw them down. Now, the, the, it's just such high impact. So I, I think um, for a guy like him, he'll struggle. But then you get a guy like Brad Thorne, who's probably the exception to the rule and is phenomenal. And what an amazing athlete he is. But he, he's a rarity. But the Highlanders aren't going so flash, are they? No, so, no. Oh, that's right. But, so to answer that question, no, Tony, I think Tony would call All right, I'll guess no questions now. We've spoken oh. about your specialist position, Mr. Yeah, Woodcock. Uh, Mr. Hoare? No. Mr. Mialamu? No. Mr. Ali Williams? No. No. <laughs> It's easy up here, no. Okay, he's on sabbatical in the States right now. Richie McCaw. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. I don't think so. I'm no. just, I'm just curious, so. what do people think? Is Richie McCaw going to make the 2015 World Cup? No, no. It's amazing, isn't it? He's having a sabbatical now with that very intent. Well, it's, it's such, it's, I mean, everybody loves Richie McCaw. He's been a fantastic servant. The guys like Michael Jones, guys like Josh Cromfield, guys like Graham Murray, they all come to the end. And I'll never forget, a, and a lot of people won't remember this guy, but a guy called Kieran Crowley, who was a wonderful guy, played 200 games for Taranaki. He said when he retired, because we thought, how are we ever going to move on from Kieran Crowley? He said, no player is bigger than the game. And there's a couple of young, fantastic players here. There's always going to be guys coming through. There's always going to be somebody to replace the existing players. That is just the reality of it. So... I say no to all of them. Okay, and perhaps the prince of them all, he is the most uh, decorated rugby player in history in terms Nate of points. <laughs> Dan Carter, will he make 2015? No. No? Wow. You've heard it from Bill Allen, ladies and gentlemen. He's one of the real icons of the All Blacks. Well done, gentlemen, the Vikings, the Hurricanes. Glad to have you in the stadium. Well done, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob. Which one are we going to go for this time, Dobby? Dobby? Well, the All Blacks and the Warriors is a bit of a Ah, of course. Right, this is a real good teaser, actually. Real good teaser. We don't want to give you any hints, but it's a good question. A good question. Think about it. There have been six All Blacks who have gone on to play for the Warriors. Who are they? Zibbers will now be served as you ponder. I understand it's a buffer. It's a buffer.